Hello everybody, it's Robert Powers. Today I'm gonna to show you how to put a new top lift, a new heel. Okay, this part is called the top lift. So you can see this one is pretty worn out um, and it's almost to the point where if it wears out anymore, it's gonna wear into the heel base. Okay, you can see the uh, brown part, there's a leather stacked construction heel base. I'm gonna replace it. I've obviously worn this in a little bit, okay? and make it look nice like this except i'm not going to do the leather rubber combo in this i'm just going to replace it with a uh, one piece rubber okay so um first of all the shoes i'm going to be using today i've actually uh i did another video on them here just last week previous video i'll link it below if you want to see it was my uh, first ever attempt at resoling shoes at home and i labeled it a fail it's obviously very bad okay and i get that um this is the second one that wasn't in the video this one's not horrible terrible um you know you can see that thing there where i ran out of string and had to start new string but anyway um learning getting a little better so i hand uh stitched that i guess you could say but the point is the heel top lifts are worn out i've been waiting to get a pair of allen edmonds now let me let me show you a couple things that you're going to need to do the job first okay um the materials you'll need and then i'll get into an explanation then i'll show you how to do it now first of all what you're going to need is you're going to need heels Okay, replacement heels of some sort. Like I said, like this, these are Goodyear. Um, the, I get them from eBay, and the eBay seller is Nord Shoe. I'll link it below, N-O-R-D-S-H-O-E, Nord Shoe. Um, uh, and they're generally right around the neighborhood of 20 bucks for a pack of six. So I think they wind up with shipping and stuff costing me about $2.30, $2.40 a pair, okay? Now these are six millimeter thick. Um, so let me... Um, go through the rest of the materials and I'll explain why that's important. Glue. This is what I've been using for a few years now and it works really well. Weldwood contact cement. You can get it at Walmart or any, um, you know, like a hardware type store. And these things are called acid brushes. So, you know, a little brush and it's just stuck on the end of the thing here to make a handle for it. Okay. You need so acid brushes. Uh, I think I get those at uh, like Lowe's or Home Depot. And what do you call this? A scraper or spatula? Okay. Bigger hammer, kind of like a regular hammer. Smaller hammer. Um, I like to put a couple nails in them. Um, so you know, I've got a little assortment box of small nails. So the ones I'll probably be using will either be like these ones, the uh, little little tiny stainless nails, okay? I think they're 18 gauge. Uh, those are, I'm sorry, those ones I just showed you are 20 gauge by half inch, okay? Uh, they might be called steel wire nails or sometimes like the, the brass plated ones. I don't like these as much because they're a little bit longer. Okay. And to set the nails a punch, and this is actually like a flat punch. Um, and you can see I actually ground a divot in it. Okay. So, and if you can see the belt sander here. Okay. Uh, the belt sander actually for finishing is pretty important. So those are all the materials needed there. Okay. Um, oh, also... Some wide masking tape you know might need a screwdriver uh, you might need a pen so first of all let me show you a little bit about the geometry here okay this is really important and this took me some um the negative experiences to, to learn this so um first of all the shoe geometry so you can see in this slide first there's the top lift the rubber top lift uh, or rubber leather top lift that touches the ground um, and then secondly you see the heel base and you can see here where the gray representing the ground, everything is in perfect alignment, okay? Now, believe it or not, if you make that top lift, even just like one sixteenth of an inch, okay, sixteenth of an inch is like 63 thousandths of an inch, okay? Uh, one millimeter is roughly, I believe, 40 thousandths of an inch. But if you make it even a millimeter and a half, you know, or like a sixteenth of an inch thicker, as I've illustrated here in this next slide, do you see how the angle is off? And I know that might seem really minor, but I've found that even a 16th inch too thick, and, and let me try and illustrate this on a, another pair of shoes I have, really throws it off, okay? So here is a pair, well, this is a pair of Johnston and Murphy's, um, and this is a pair of Aristocrats, okay? Johnston and Murphy Aristocrats, and you can see they have been resold, and a half sole was put on, okay? You can see how the stitching didn't quite line up, but anyway, it had a new half sole put on and a new heel put on and so let me try and illustrate this here okay can you see the gap there now obviously it's sitting flush on what would be the ground can you see the gap there 
okay? I know that may seem fairly minor, right? I can't tell you the exact measurement, but it seems to me when you get a, over, a gap at the back, see the angle it's making? When that gap, that angle gets over about two degrees, two or three degrees, okay? I don't know what that is, five degrees maybe? Um, I could probably take a still shot and try and measure it, but, measure it, but when it gets to be that much, what happens is when you walk, you don't necessarily notice it, but when you stand, okay, here's another way to look at it. If you put the heel flat, if the gap is more than, I can't give you an exact measurement, but if it's more than about, more than about an eighth of an inch, you know, um, so that's going to be like three millimeters. If it's more than a couple three millimeters, you can see that is way more, then it's going to get uncomfortable because what happens is when you put your weight on the heel, the shoe has to flex, okay, and it'll kind of bow, okay, here, and you'll feel it inside. So this shoe is kind of uncomfortable. It's not, it doesn't hurt, it's just irritating to stand on, and that is because the top lift is way too thick, okay? So there's different models of shoes, you know, here, like I said, Johnston and Murphy. Um, with the Johnston and Murphy, what you're going to see is the top lift is generally glued right to the leather heel, stacked leather heel base, okay? Now, here's what I want to show you with the Allen Edmonds. This is something critical with Allen Edmonds, and that's why I was waiting to get a pair of Allen Edmonds to do this on. With the factory Allen Edmonds, okay, even though I did this, this is a factory Allen Edmonds sole here, right? Um, and I did a poor job of, of lining up that line, I know that. Uh, so don't flame me there, okay? Uh, this is a factory Allen Edmonds heel. And the way you know is the factory Allen Edmonds heel, since uh, I think the 80s, have this V pattern in them. And on the box right there, it actually has the letters. It's hard to see here in the video, I know, because it's all worn. But the letters A-E. Okay, that's an A under the Y. So A-E, okay, and the V. And that's how you know it's an original Allen Edmonds heel. Now, here's something important I want to show you. Here is the heel top lift that I pulled off of this shoe. From the factory, they're just, just glued on. They use a pretty strong glue, okay? But here's what's important. Now, I just pulled this off. This is from the factory. Can you see there's another layer of rubber, okay? So the important thing to understand on the Allen Edmonds shoes is there is the stacked leather construction heel, and then this, I don't know if it's rubber or plastic, but this thin layer of hard rubber goes on top. Then you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've seen five nails. I've, I don't know if I've necessarily counted, but five to seven nails. That Those nails are what's holding the leather heel base onto the uh, leather sole, okay? But that's how that's held on. We don't want to disturb this. That's really important because sometimes you'll see over time this is glued. The heel base is glued onto here and obviously nailed. But sometimes that glue can let loose a little bit. Nails can loosen up. You know, so we, we don't want to disturb that if it's tight. And where you're going to see gapping, if it's loose, is here at that corner. Okay, so but let's assume that's held on tight and that's not going to be disturbed. All right. Okay, so now I've got the heel that I want to take off. And I may have forgotten to mention this. Um, not absolutely necessary, but really nice cobbler stand. I purchased this off a of Let Go, which is like a local, you know, it's like a, a Facebook marketplace type app where you can find people local selling things. I bought this for 20 bucks. You, I have used before just a two by four sticking up out of a vice. And by the way, just FYI, if you happen to catch my shoes in the video, these shoes I only wear for like cobbling or taking out the trash, okay? So don't flame me for wearing crappy shoes. I don't want to get glue or something on, you know, Allen Edmonds. And this part comes off. The cool part is it goes this way and it's level. Flip it around 180, 180 and it's actually angled up. I don't know if you can tell. So this makes it really nice though. Okay. And you can hold the stand with your feet is what's going on. So I've got to make sure to get the under the tongue. All right. Now, so what I'm going to use is I'm going to use this spatula. And uh, again, there is a side with a taper on it here and there is a flat side. I want to take the tapered side down. I want the tapered side down and here's the reason why. When the taper is up, this is going to tend to dig into the lower surface more. Okay, when the taper is down, it's going to tend to dig in less. I don't want to dig into the that rubber layer down below. So actually, I would generally advise that you have some rubber, or I'm sorry, some uh, nice leather gloves to wear. Something like this, right? Mechanics gloves. Okay, and get that in between. Okay, once you have it in between the layer, I'm gonna stand on this thing and I'm also gonna rest my leg kind of against the heel of the shoe. Just be careful though, you wanna keep your body parts out of the strike zone here as much as possible. Okay.
when you're striking, here's a tip. Don't look down here. Check down here once in a while, but look at where you're hitting. You want your eyes here where you're striking. You see why I want the leather glove? I just hit my thumb. Okay, now do you see? I've made some progress there, okay? See where it's at? Now here's the key. I've, uh, this is just my opinion. I'm not a professional cobbler, okay? I, again, don't want to take the heel base off. I've seen cobblers grab them with a pair of pliers and just rip them off, you know, and, and then they go and rip the heel base off. I don't want to rip the heel base off, and I don't want to apply upward force. I don't want to grab this with some pliers and pull it because then I'm applying upward force on the leather heel base, which could separate it from the leather sole, okay? So I'm not going to do that. Again, my opinion, okay? I'm not a professional, right? So... This is just what's worked for me. Now that I've got that there, I'm going to go uh, take, pull it back out. And about halfway, do you see I got about half of it sticking out? And I'm going to drive it across the front. And this one's stuck on pretty good. Sometimes they come off fairly easy. There we go. So I got the through the front there. And now I'm going to start going back from front to back. There we go. Got one side. I'm starting to sweat a little bit here, believe it or not. Go across the other side. Again, we kind of brace the shoe a little bit, the back of the shoe. Okay. Now I'm going to go down the middle. At this point, I'm starting to win. Ow, son of a mother. Oh, God, that hurt. There we go. Now I think the victory is mine. Now I can... There we go. Now, what I want you to notice here is how razor thin that actually was. Okay? I'm trying to get the camera down. You see how thin that actually was? The edge there, the outer edge. So these things might be more worn than you really think they are. Okay? So this is a good time to change them. And now, okay? It, it, you don't want it to be worn into. You know, the, the, this heel, the, uh, whatever you call the heel base, but you don't want it to be worn into this. You want to change it beforehand, okay? So, now what we need to do is you can't really glue this. This is too rough. You see all the old glue on there? It's too rough. So I'm going to reset the camera up on my belt sander. So what I'm going to do with the belt sander here is you see there's this flat portion, okay, where there's a metal pl pad under it, plate under it. I'm going to use that part. And what you have to remember, though, is with the, the belt sander, watch which way it spins. So it's going, right, front to back in this case, or I guess from your point of view, from right to left. So it's going to tend to drag the shoe. If you put it like this, here's what I'm going to tell you. It will remove more material from the front than from the back. Because once it removes material from the front, that material kind of is, acts like a lubricant. So if you just do like this and put even pressure on it, you're going to take off more from the front and not from the back. If I do this, then i got to switch it around and do that. Does that make sense? That's good enough okay that's good enough um, so next what I need is I need the heel that I'm gonna use in the heel base and here's what you're looking for it's got to be big enough okay it needs to be wider than the heel it needs to be longer than it and we're gonna trim it up okay um, so what we're gonna use next is gonna use a glue the can now I use this stuff in a well ventilated area I'd be lying if I said I never used it inside but you know this stuff is um, to, to, to quote uh, David uh, from vcleat.com, 
the odor that comes from this kind of stuff, I'm just glad that I've already reproduced, okay? So let me just leave it at that. It's pretty bad smell. I would use it in a well-ventilated area. Follow the directions. This is a contact cement. So what you do is with this stuff, you are actually going to put it onto both surfaces, let it tack up and dry a little bit, then stick it on, okay? I know that may sound weird if you've never used contact cement before, right? So you want to make sure that the surfaces are fairly clean. You know, this isn't painting a car, so, um, right? You're going to trim it after you put it on. Again, front edges and the back edges are where it'll peel off first. So I'm going to make sure those areas are well coated. Okay. If I feel like it needs a little more. According to the directions, uh, the directions on the can actually tell you to let this stuff set up. And I think it says for at least uh, allow both surfaces to dry for 15 to 20 minutes, depending on temperature and humidity. It's pretty humid today. Okay, so I'm going to give it a few minutes to tack up and then I'm going to put them together. I just wanted to get good at doing this. Don't ask me why, I just want to get good at it, okay? So um, I'm going to show you something that some people, if you're squeamish, uh, you know, blood and injury, you may want to fast forward 10 seconds, okay, when I say. Um, the way you fast forward is you double tap, you know, on the right side of your screen if you're on a mobile device. Um, but what I was doing was um, I was actually using a knife and trimming, okay? And I can tell you that I actually had these gloves on, okay? Um, and I was using the knife and trimming and the knife slipped. Do you see that hole in the, right? It was actually a utility knife, um, just like this, right? And I was trimming and the knife slipped and went right through there, okay? And can you see that scar right there? There's three stitches on that and I got really, really lucky, okay? Went right between two tendons, um, didn't hit a major artery, I don't think. Uh, missed the tendons, no nerve damage, thank God, thank the Lord above, okay? But go ahead and fast forward 10 seconds if you don't want to see it. Here's a photo of the actual injury uh, that took me to the ER, okay? So it stabbed right through and bled and I had to go to the ER, okay? Um, probably one of the worst parts about that was I got blood all over one of my favorite uh, Brooks Brothers dress shirts. Um, and by the way, OxyClean actually got all the blood out. It's unbelievable. So uh, OxyClean, you know, the powdered stuff you buy at the grocery store, the bucket of OxyClean, follow the directions, and it got it out. Now, back to the job. But, oh, there's my dog, right? So I've got this part now. When you stick this on, here's what I'm going to tell you. You better be exact with your placement. It's not going to be the exact same shape. So I would not try to not trim it. Just make sure it's not over, um, you know, the underside is not exposed anywhere, okay? So I'm looking at that Goodyear logo. I kind of want it perpendicular to the center line of the shoe, okay? So, and I've got it hovered above. You see where I've got my fingers, okay? And like I said, you kind of only get one shot at this. And I would just start at the front there and I've got it touching kind of at an angle so I could still pull it off if I had to. I'm checking, see I'm checking around here the back. I'm going to adjust it just a little bit before I stick it down. All right. All right there we go. Okay and what I'm going to do is um, I guess I could do it up here. It's not ideal. Yep okay. While the glue is wet I have to use the big hammer for this. All right. I'm going to seat it and I want to scoot this to the front to get the thing under the heel. don't have to be very careful with the rubber heels okay but here's going to tell you when you're doing uh leather leather rubber quarter leather quarter rubber heels okay the key with this by the way um this is the actual rubber that i use and it comes in a big giant sheet here okay i got it from land whirl and leather in indianapolis land whirl and leather i'll put their website and phone number down below and you just trim it to size, see it does have a pattern on it, okay? The key with this is, when you do a quarter leather rubber, is that seam. You need to have that really tight. And the way you do that is, you put the, the rubber and the leather 
on the belt sander and use this flat part to grind it completely flat so that the two edges made up with each other, okay? So, there's more to this than you thought there was, isn't there? So now I've got that, and since this is pretty close, okay, um, I can sand that down, right? Now here's the key. Remember I said the tape? Okay. You, what you can do with the tape, I learned this from cars, take your, the, the tape here, okay? And if you want, if you need to, okay, what you can do is you can take your clothes, stick it to your clothes just one time. What that does is it puts a little bit of lint, okay? That puts a little bit of lint onto the tape and reduces the stickiness. Does that make sense? And what you're probably going to want to do is tape off, okay, the shoe. All right? You don't want to nick the shoe while you're sanding. And I would put a couple layers on, stick it to my pants one time, okay? I learned that working on cars. Still plenty of stick, okay? I'm gonna do one more layer here, stick it to my pants. Okay. And I don't think I'm gonna go up that high, you know? And I've even started to do this without the tape. I'm gonna go just on the back side one more layer to double up the tape, okay? The most critical area around the back here, okay? Just gotta get my earplugs back in. And I'm gonna get the belt sander back out, okay? My gloves back on, I'll cut back in. And what I found is that, especially if it's black, it's very easy to refinish this. So since this is black, I'm just gonna do it the way I usually do it, with a black heel and just let the sander sand it and I'll show you how to refinish that, okay? By the way, the belt sander, there's this flat part here where it's got this metal plate under it. Okay, let me, let me, let me show you. You can't really see it right now. You can see the flat metal plate? So that part is really flat, okay? Let me adjust it back. Uh, well, and then there's this part. This span between here and the roll is flexible, and that's great for curved areas. So watch me use that area, too. Another tip, you see the belt? I don't know if you can tell, the belt is overhanging the wheel a little bit. If I'm sanding on the right side here, okay, right next to that roller, when you get to the, the part that is not backed, it kind of falls off. So I'm gonna adjust the belt so that the belt is even with the right side edge of that roller. Here's another tip. When you're sanding, the angle at which I hold this, okay, is really critical. Okay, if the belt is here, okay, and I have the shoe like this, it's going to create an angle, and then this part and this part will not be parallel, and it will look funny, and you'll get waves as you go around, okay? So it's really critical what angle you hold this, okay? And if you hold it here, you know, you're going to probably sand something you don't want to hold, so you got to get it perpendicular. What I'm doing here is I'm using that span, okay, because I want it to flex to get that curve.
that is pretty good, okay? Nice and even, all the way around, okay? That's pretty good. Now, the, the front here, there's a couple different ways you can do the front, um, and I'll show you. Okay, um, I apologize, there's a couple things I forgot to, to put in the uh, uh, items ingredients list. Utility knife, but here's the key. Do you see the blade on that? I believe this is called a carpet knife, okay? So it's got that hook on it. That hook on there is super critical, okay? You almost can't cut a straight line without this hook, and I'll show you why in a minute, okay? Um, and or a Dremel. It's just a, you know, sanding bit on it. Okay, so again, gloves. This is part I would consider a little more dangerous using this knife, okay? So, and the reason for this hook here, okay, and I've, I have even trimmed these using just the knife. The, that, that hook part is like a guide, and that's what keeps it straight, okay? So this is going to be a little difficult. So I'm going to start here, and I'm watching the tip of that hook, okay? I hope that's there. I can't really look at the camera while I'm doing this, okay? So again, i got to hold it perpendicular. Oh, see, there it went into the leather a little bit. You can grind off more, but you can't put the rubber back. And this particular heel is not too difficult to... Woo! I actually poked into the glove there, see? Didn't hit my finger, though. Not horrible. Uh, but definitely not... You can't, you know, leave it like that. The line is wavy, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and plug my Dremel in and kind of uh, trim that off. Another tip you'll see that Allen Edmonds does, by the way. A lot of shoe companies do. I shouldn't just say Allen Edmonds. The heel, okay, on the inside, okay, on the inside corner, this is worn so it's hard to see. They put a little chamfer. They, so the angle of that, okay, from this perspective is like 45, okay, and it's also cut 45 this way, okay. The reason for that is so that this, uh, um, and that's on the I'm sorry, yeah, that's going to be on the inside. So when you're walking, so that corner is cut off so it doesn't catch the pant cuff, okay? So I'm going to try to grind that back in. You can cut it or grind it either one. I might as well just, I'll just use the utility knife and I'll cut it in, okay? Am I on the camera? I'm going to go 45 and 45, okay? Then we're going to use a sawing action, so I want a good bit of the blade sticking out. The angle isn't so much that as critical uh, as the fact that you get it straight, whatever angle you pick. There we go. Okay. All right. Now I'll show you the materials you need to uh, put the color back on that heel. Okay. So I'm going to break. Next, to finish the heel, I'm going to need a little bit of sandpaper. I know this is a tiny scrap, but that's all I need. Uh, this is actually 400 grit. Okay. You could even start with like a, like a 180, uh, but I don't think I'll need it in this case dye. So in this case, because it's black, I'm just going to use this Kiwi leather dye. Okay, this is actually made for, you know, like uh, restaining the edges of the soles. Okay. Um, for the other colors, though, because Kiwi is only available in black and you can get Kiwi at any Walmart or drugstore. Feebing's leather dye, if you're doing like tan or some other color. Okay, Feebing's, right? I think you go to their website, Feebing's.com or go to eBay to get it. It's like seven bucks a can. It comes with a cotton applicator. Okay. And a bottle of dye. Okay. Um, and shoe polish. I mean, if it's for the edges of the heels, I just use Kiwi. Horsehair brush. Okay. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over this to make sure that this is smooth. Okay. Because I know right now it may not seem like a big deal, but there's a texture difference, okay, between what I've sanded and what I have not sanded. So what I've sanded, you need to get, like I said, I think at least a 400 grit is good. And you got to get that smooth. You want to get the scratches out of there. Otherwise, you're just going to see a difference in texture uh, when you dye it. 
and I'm pressing really hard, okay? At the end there, when I was using the belt sander, uh, I was pressing very, very lightly, okay? But now, because I'm using my hand, right? And this is actually from a, um, a this sandpaper right here. Um, it's from when I used to do body work, so it's got a sticky back, so it's really nice because it just sticks to my thumb. pieces of leather. It's part of the beauty of this. I think that's good. Okay. So once I got that, let me put the... I like to put shoe trees back in the shoes if I want to flip them upside down or something because I think it just helps hold the shape of the shoe better. Okay, and this stuff, rock it off carefully. There's like a little check ball in the, in the end of this. Okay, so if you haven't used it in a while, Okay, it'll be kind of dry. You just push down once and now the sponge is wet. And I'm going to try to keep it off of the upper. If you do get some onto the upper, just wipe it off with your finger, like right away. Like right away. Don't let it set in. Especially if the uppers are polished. It'll wipe right off. Okay, there we go. This stuff is alcohol-based, so it dries very fast. And you may need to do it a couple times. Okay. Right. And then, once that dries, we're going to polish it. And now that this has dried, um, and I'm going to take my shoe polish. Okay. Mm, yeah, see, it's all dried, but yeah, that's okay. It still works. And get a decent section. I'm going to load this up really good. I really want to fill it in well. Be very liberal with this stuff. Okay, put it on, that means put it on really thick. And yes, you could finish this better and better if you want, you know, but for what this shoe is, I'm not going to spend that much time, okay? This shoe just, this particular shoe is not nice enough to warrant spending a ton of time. Okay. And you can see a spot there. Do you see right there? A little bit of a gap. Okay, that may have been because I didn't sand this rubber back down enough. It may have been because where it adhered to each other, those two surfaces weren't perfectly parallel. But again, I'm not a professional. I'm learning. Okay, I do decent work, but... You know, okay, and then I'm just gonna brush it. High speed, high pressure, I'm pressing pretty hard. I am exerting myself a little bit. There we go, look at that, huh? Not too shabby. There we go. Now the last thing here, it's not absolutely necessary because the factory didn't have it, but I think it's not a bad touch. Now I'm just going to take a couple of my small 18 gauge nails, okay? And these are the shorter ones. These are the, these are the half inch long. Um, right in the corner there, sometimes I've found you need to actually drill a small pilot hole depending how tough the leather is, okay? These are not easy to get in straight, by the way, because when it hits that leather below, like I said, depending how hard that leather is, it may want to go crooked. Awesome. Nice and straight, and I want to get this one about the same distance back, just on the front corners. Okay. Now this is really not so critical with the rubber, you know, because it's rubber and it's going to bounce back. You need to smack them and it kind of like goes under the surface. But if this were leather, you can't do that because if this were leather, um, you're going to put marks in the leather. So I took a punch with a flat tip and I ground a little spot on it to hold the nail head. 
get it on there, use my little middle finger to support it, and then once I get it set, I'm gonna stop looking at the, uh, at the nail head, I'm gonna focus up here. It's not the easiest thing in the world to do. Okay, and, and then I'm gonna punch it a couple times, okay, and then check it. I actually hit that one a little bit too hard, it went too deep, right? That went in faster than I thought, but that'll set the nail a little bit below the surface. And now, I would consider this complete top lift, okay? Now, there is actually, it's humid out today, I'm sweating. There's one other way you can actually do this, okay? Another way you can actually do this is, you can just take your shoes to a local professional cobbler, and I think the ones in the area here charge 25 bucks to do this, okay? So if you don't wanna sweat and you know grind and you know risk uh, you know poking yourself with a knife, now you have a little more appreciation for what your local cobbler actually does. Okay, I'm trying to get this tape off of here while I'm talking. Just take them to him for whatever they charge. Alan Edmonds, I believe, to do their full re, uh, re not full, but their re-healing. Um, I believe theirs is 50 bucks, you know? There you go. All right, hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you wanna see more of these kind of things, go to my channel. Um, and if you would love to subscribe, please do so. Um, so far, I think I've got about eh, close to 40 videos. Um, and if you wanna be notified when more of them come out, hit that little notification bell on the bottom right. All right, thank you, have a great day.